O most holy one, my God and my King, may some word that is heard be thine. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'd like to bring you greetings from your siblings of the 136 churches of the great, historic, and faithful Episcopal Diocese of Pennsylvania. Know that we journey with you, we pray for you, and as your bishop, I love you. St. David's is special to my heart. I'd first like to tell all those who are being cons confirmed and received how much you inspire me, like we spoke of earlier. You are doing something good and holy today. And for all those who have journeyed with them, my gratitude for being companions. And then my dear friend Frank, it is a blessing to serve with you. And I thank the clergy, Liz, Maurice, Emily, for being faithful shepherds of this beloved flock. Thank you. I ask you to reflect on four questions. Who are you? What gives your life meaning? What is your purpose in life? And the most crucial question ever asked is the one Jesus asked his friends. Who do you say that I am. If Jesus were to ask you personally this question today, how would you respond? We'll get back to your answer in a little bit. You do not often find a movie that touches philosophical, sociological, psychological, and theological depths. I found one a few years back, Hostiles. It is a brutal, and let me warn you, it is a brutal movie, but it's also a beautiful movie. It is a movie that portrays humanity at its worst. Prejudice, violence, and depravity. It also illustrates humankind at its best. Transformation, friendship, forgiveness, redemption, human longing, and love. It is set in 1892 in my beloved New Mexico. And the movie begins with a quote from D.H. Lawrence. The essential American soul is hard, isolate, stoic, and a killer. It has never yet melted. Those words, when you hear them, they are jarring because it makes you reflect on who God created us to be. The story's arc is centered on a battered and respected Army Cavalry captain nearing retirement. He is tormented by demons, and he is sent on one final mission that he angrily attempts to resist. He must escort a bitter enemy, a dying Cheyenne chief and his family, to their former home in Montana. These enemies hate one another. It is vile. And their history is one of both inflicting terrible violence and cruelty on the other side. And they see each other not as humans, but something less than human. So in their journey as a group, they face together horrific trauma and indescribable loss. Through their shared suffering, they begin to see one another differently. They see hearts 
They see stories, life stories. They see faces in humanity. In one poignant scene, the widow Mrs. Cade speaks to Captain Blocker after suffering an indescribable loss. And despite being violent and brutal, Captain Blocker is reading the Bible. She asks him, Do you believe in the Lord, Mr. Blocker? Captain Blocker responds, Yes, ma'am, I do. But he's been blind to what's been going on out here for a long time. Mrs. Quaid answers, I see that. But I have to believe that in times like these, they strengthen our bond with him. If I did not have faith, what would I have? In modern society, what do we really have? What do we really have if we do not have our faith in Jesus Christ? I use this movie as the context of our gospel, where we share, see the importance of a shared journey, understanding amid tumultuous circumstances, community dependence and love. You know, when we hear our gospel stories, we sometimes just catch pieces, or maybe intentionally or unintentionally ignore the depth of the meaning. Maybe we've heard them so many times that they become familiar, even dull. Yet scripture is meant to be heard and lived seamlessly through the arc of the story and it should touch our hearts in different ways and at different times in our lives. Remember with scripture the meaning is often found between the lines in the depth of the words. So today I want you to do something differently. I want you to listen differently. I want you to hear with your hearts and visualize with your imagination. So today, place yourself in the story. You are there. So you are in the boat with Jesus. You have just seen all his miracles in Galilee. You've witnessed, you were with him as he was calming the storm. And your heart is pumping. Yet you're a bit apprehensive about what is yet to come. Jesus is visiting a pagan territory. And you see them standing on the shore. And you get out of the boat with him. You wonder, will they welcome him? They're pagans. They don't know Jesus. Will they attack them? What will they do to me? So you're nervous. Witness the miracles. You step off the boat. And all of a sudden you jump because you hear this man screaming. Screaming. This is the type of guy you would cross the street to avoid. And then... Jesus, your Jesus, steps forth and speaks, actually gets close to touch this beloved child of God who's been abandoned by his community. Yes, he is in chains, but what other chains are binding him? Could have been abuse marginalization, violence, physical abilities, poverty. Everyone's saying he's possessed by demons. Are they spiritual demons, addictive demons, or even medical demons? This man who has just scared you has been consigned to a tomb. A 
tomb that no one will go near. Yet he is alive and he is suffering. He is crying out to you. Do you see that at one point he was someone's small child who was loved? Maybe a brother or a sister? And yet people are hostile toward him. You hear everyone on the shore shouting, forget him, Jesus. He is different. He is not like us. The pain, the isolation, the abandonment, and the loneliness this child, this child of God has endured. Yet you know our Lord. Jesus will not abandon him. And yet in your hearing, in his words, and people say he's crazy, he is the only one who recognizes Jesus as the Son of God. Why? You watch Jesus and know what he will do. He will love him like he loves you unconditionally. And then what happens? The man falls at Jesus' feet, powerless to save himself, but he knows the one who has the power. The demons are lifted and sent away. The man is unbound. He is clothed. And he is restored to community and life. Through Jesus, he has found peace. And then notice the crowds, all these people, the world. What do they tell Jesus? Go away, go away. Yet the man who was isolated, abandoned, abused, forgotten, begs Jesus if he can be with him. Siblings, this is not a long ago story about demons and pigs. It happens today. You see, we rationalize, we explain, we seek help through all the various fixes that the world has to offer. Social media, Google searches. And we have in the process made Jesus into a caricature, a metaphor, a secondary thought instead of every part of our day. Every word, every action, every breath. Because we say Jesus is risen because we believe it, that he's here, right here, right now, with you every second of the day. And what is distressing is we forget the power of his why and his how. The message of our Lord which is so beautifully portrayed in this gospel, has been deluded, confused, and stolen. Because society focuses on the individual. Forget him, Jesus. Look at me. Instead of everyone. We treat one another horribly. And this is not our faith. As those who carry the name of Jesus Christ, Christians, we must reflect and live his truth, which is hope, which is healing, which is forgiveness, courage, kindness, generosity, listening, compassion, inclusion, and love. We are called to love people like Jesus loved people, all people, without conditions. I truly believe, deep in my heart, that Jesus not only came to teach us about the love of God, which is profound and I can't even grasp it, but he also came to teach us how to be human as God intended. 
And the only way we will learn is Christ must live inside of us. And not just for a few hours on a Sunday, but every moment of the day. Because we know that when you're desperate after a long night of despair, Jesus is there. When you hunger for something more than the world has to offer, Jesus will provide. When you are unsure about what your future holds, Jesus will guide your path. And when you have nowhere to turn because of those tombs, you hear that voice. When you are hurting and bound by those chains, our Lord will set you free. And all Jesus asks in return is to love God and to love one another. And that's why we cannot ignore or neglect our relationship with Jesus. Our relationship with Him cannot be remote or abstract. Faith cannot be a spectator sport. And so I promise you, if you have ever kept Him at a distance, even now, step forth. Jesus will embrace you with open arms. If you've been indifferent, take a risk. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. If following Jesus seems difficult, and I promise you, it will be, don't be afraid. Trust Him. He is always with you, and He will give you the peace you seek and the courage and strength to live His life. Because this relationship, His love, is not a restriction. It is our liberation and freedom from the chains of this world. It is a beautiful and transfigured life. And I say this wherever I go, Jesus does not need any more admirers. He has far too many admirers. He needs disciples who will go to the ends of the earth proclaiming His hope, His love, His forgiveness, and His peace. Yes, it's hard and tiring work. And if you seek a comfortable place never to allow yourselves to love or be loved, a faith that never challenges you, that Sunday-only type of belief, and a God who never asks you to give everything, a small God without power that you manipulate and you control, then Christianity is not for you. But if you're willing to give everything, let go of old securities, even your old way of life, if you're willing to set out on a journey of hope and discovery to realize your purpose and meaning, to forgive, to dream, to persevere and love with the same love that Christ loves you, and to accept deep in your heart, think about it, deep in your heart that God loves you, as much as He loves His Son, Jesus Christ, Jesus is waiting. Just thinking that should give you shivers. Because, my friends, out of a tomb of darkness, a bright light shines. It will always shine. And in His name, I'm begging you, take a risk every moment of the day. It does not matter what you have done, your past, or the number of sins and failures, because thank God we have a God of a billion chances. And God loves you just as you are right now. Through Jesus, your past is explained, your per present has purpose, and your future is secure. What more could we really want? in life. Because we know Jesus turns darkness into light, despair into hope, shame into glory, dry bones into beating hearts, graves into gardens, and the dirty stale water of our past into the extravagant new wine of a new life. Jesus saves us from a life without God. So let's get back to that question. Today, and each day forward, it is your choice. So when Jesus asks you, who do you say that I am, how will you respond? I challenge you to respond, 
And my prayer as bishop is that your response will be, Savior, Redeemer, friend, Jesus, you're the love of my life. Because once you come to know the love of Jesus Christ, nothing, nothing else in this world will seem beautiful and desirable. When asked about the centrality of the movie, the producer says, the movie shows the beauty and the brutality of the human family, while fundamentally asking the question, why are we so hostile to one another? Why are we so hostile to one another if we follow Jesus Christ? Let us call out to him. Let us follow at his feet and look into his eyes. His power has no boundaries, neither does his love. We are all, my siblings, on this journey together, together. And there's no differences at the foot of the cross. And we are called to show the face of Christ to everyone that we meet. I will not tell you how the movie ends, but I will give you a hint. Together there was a knowing that they could not do it alone. They needed one another. And in the process, they found something deeper. They understood that all of us seek the same thing. Safety for our family, peace, love, acceptance, just to be God's beloved. Jesus is calling us from the darkness, freeing us from his chains, just as powerfully as he called that tormented man. So answer with your voice, answer with your life, step forth and meet him. Then go forth out there and live the life of Jesus Christ. Tell the world the power of God. He is more than a name. He will heal, he will bring new life, and he will liberate our lives. Jesus, only Jesus, makes things new. And as our gospel instructs, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and what mercy he has shown you. So as a family, let us go together. God bless you and amen.